and closer. Then with an exhalation, recharge your back and then harden the backness and increase the diameter of the back of the knee, increase the diameter. When you increase here, the knee cap turns in more and more. You give a single stretch from the side of the armpit up to the ankle. Single stretch. Now with an exhalation, take the waist slightly backwards, go to Halasana. After touching the floor, make the hands backwards as much as you can. Straight. Don't worry about interlocking first. Now pressing the inner thumb to the floor, ascend the side ribs or the floating ribs. Raise the floating ribs up and then move the body. The back floating ribs should be lifted up. Back portion of the floating ribs should move up. Now extend your coffin muscle from inside out. Inside out. Now lift the back bow as much as you can without dropping the crop muscle. Good. Now slowly move the hips back, come to Sarvangasana again. Hands on your back. Now with an exhalation, take the right leg down. Watch this big toe. You should not oscillate as the right leg is going down. Now when we take one leg, we always move the back leg. But you should learn to extend from the pelvic girders forward. Front leg should move longer than the back leg. Back leg goes up, front leg moves forward. Now take this leg to Halasana. Extend your arms on the floor. Now slowly, inch by inch, now take the legs backwards and move slowly, cutting the buttock into your trunk. Exhale, come down. Now stay in that right angle. Wait for some time. Now, move the shin deep in. Then holding the head of the shin, move the legs down. Then exhalation. Now, having adjusted the other group from the front, now I will explain from the back so that you can also know how you correct yourself from the back. Suppose you have to observe here, this is the center portion of the spine. So every time you have to release the hand, you have to bend your elbows, you have to, then you have to take the elbows inside. Then you have to manipulate your fingers on the back without widening the elbows. Or sometimes we just teach us to stand and move just like that inverse. It's very difficult in Sarvangasana to bring the back outer arm to touch the mat. So you have to bend your level and then you have to turn this muscle, this uh, triceps deep in uh, that way. The more the outer triceps touches the mat, the better the grip. You adjust yourself, as I said, outer triceps. Uh, adjust that also. Well, and with your hand, you have to lift this portion up. Good. Now close the lift, the socket of the hips up. Suck in and stretch up. Good. Now every time you have to observe the, the opening of the cough muscle on either side, which opens more, which closes more. So now this is opening, this is so, so you have to stretch here. Good. Now, without shaking, take the left leg down. What's the cough muscle which collapses on the right? So without dropping the inner right cough muscle, especially the back of the knee, you have to be attentive and then bring the tailbone forward, the foot touches the ground. Tailbone forward, without oscillating this leg. Touch. Now after touching, you have to observe the hips or the parallel. So if a, if a line is drawn from here to here, this point and this point should run parallel to each other. This point and this point. There should be no difference at all. Then, without shaking, pressing the hip toe 
lift the cross of the Messiah, left hand. Detaining that, do halasana. Bring down the other right hand. Then join the feet together. Take the hands back. You have to observe here the spinal muscles. So if there is something wrong, so just you have to lift like that so that you feel the even stretch here. You are lifting here more, dropping here. So your this lattice should be lifted up in order to balance the body. Good. Lift the shoulder blade, pressing this muscle. You have to always press in in Salangasana, the outer triceps. In Halasana, the inner bicep skin should press to the ground, then only the trunk gets freedom from the hands, from the contact of the arms. Press this point from here, it will go straight. Then you can lift this point up. Keep the kidneys as far as possible concave. Correct? And now slowly slide down. With an exhalation. Holding the kneecap tight. You have to remain here until the kneecap comes straight. Yeah. Then dig the shin into your knee to go down. Head to the shin, digging into the knee. Correct? Throughout, till the end, you touch the floor, that shin should be remembered. Shin moving towards the knee. Now slowly inhale, open up. Now in this pose, side, you have to observe, this is the middle of the armpit. If a line is drawn from the middle of the armpit, adjust the body, just half the, of the front and half of the back should line, run exactly in the middle of the armpit to the chest. Then you have to spread your legs slightly apart, move the tailbone deep in, into the body, grip the tailbone and join the legs together. Now this is how the Sarvangasana comes. Sometimes with my knee, I just take that way. Then Halasana. In Halasana, this is the head of the shin. So this should run parallel to the ground. This way. Open this way, join the heels together, then lift up the inner knee bone. Hand straight on the floor. Now if you observe, this is a wrong pose. So I just lift him and bring him forward so that this portion moves forward. You have seen Ekapada Shirishasana, so I am not repeating on this side, but you understand always this, from this portion to this portion you can move forward and lift up. Good? Understood now? Adhormuka Shwanasana Adhormuka means Head downwards, Shwana means a dog, Asana means posture. It resembles the extension of the back leg of the dog, hence the name. Now you see how it should be done. It's a very resting pose. Suppose you have done standing poses. In between, you can do this pose. You have to place your palms in such a way that you grip the floor firmly. Then, by pressing the knuckles of the thumb, you have to extend the inner arm towards the shoulder, like this. Then you have to stamp your foot firmly. Then you have to stretch the arch of the foot towards the heel, simultaneously taking the head to rest the floor. Those who cannot rest the floor, they can use the brick or the bolster or the blanket. This is the pose. Watch carefully from the upper arm. I give a stretch towards my table. That is the stretch. Now the same top pose I am showing the other way so that you can see exactly even my front of the chest, my head.
from the sides. You can see, look at my toes, look at the curvature of my ankle, stretching of my calf muscle, then the ligaments of the knees at the back, lifting of the hip. Look at my waist, deaf, lightest mus muscles, stretching of the skin of the outer armpit, how they stretch, separate from the arms and the trunk. Pressure of the finger, the fingers are pressed towards the heels, so that there is a single stretch from the index finger to the outer heel and the big toe. Now, you have seen me doing dog pose, Adham Pashwanasana. When you do the Adham Pashwanasana, the legs should be firmly gripped because the hind stretch of the leg. So naturally, you cannot forget the leg at all. Place your hands on the floor, all three in one line, and then move the legs back. Now, without dropping your elbows, you have to move the head in by slowly gripping the foot from the sole towards the heel. Now, if you people observe, this is a very good stretch. So, this is the thoracic dorsal spine. So, here she has to just lift up here, pressing this, she has to stretch this point. She is also doing very well, only she has to stretch from here still, whereas she is only strong from here to here, she is not. So this is known as the divided intelligence. We should run from here as a single intelligence, just like that, and this intelligence of the leg and the intelligence of the arm should meet at this point. So the leg is stretched this way, arms are stretched that way, they meet here. It is just a triangular shape of the body. Here, if you observe, the armpits. You see the armpits. So here I will correct. Now this is the deltoid muscles. So these, let head up first. Now with the head up, move the deltoid muscles towards me in the inner plow. Then take the head in. Now can you see the difference? So this is the real. From here she has to push the body upwards. Now you understood? Mm -hmm. ah. Now come forward. Do the other way. Turn this way, yes. Mm. Now here, take the head inside, see the inner deltoids creating room, take the head inwards, nothing happens. Here. So the deltoid turns outwards, the wrist turns inwards. Here, see the strength here, the strength are not synchronizing. So what you have to do is the outer foot, outer foot should be pressed down, and then you have to move the middle shin back so that the life flows here too. You too have to work from here. Can you see? See, you are only stamping here. So if you cannot get it, you have to go a little more nearer foot. And then the heel goes down a little down. Now you can press the heel. Then if you don't get it, you have to open the inner top leg skin from inside out. And then from here you poke the heels down. That way. That's why the curvature of the foot is less near the ankle. Well done. Now I will correct the other three. You can see. This is from here the body ascends. From here, this is the divider. So from here you have to keep without dropping the skin, ascending the skin. You have to take both the legs towards the inner heel to stand the inner heel. Come on. Now see the differences here. Here she stretches the top leg. Here she stretches the bottom leg. So each one have some difficulties in learning. So now, as you have seen, I give the same stretch to her. Now, this is the outer ankle. Move the outer back ankle down and push this back and the movement will come. Now, can you see the shape? Still you have to open. Now, I just touch the little toe for her to get the movement. Come on now. Mm. Little more. That's the correct stretch. 
So you have to stamp here and you have to push back. Holding the floor with a ball point of the small toe, you have to extend towards the heel, then it opens. I'm sorry. Here also, if you observe this leg and this leg, so here also the problem comes. So here, this leg is completely straight, here the shin is mo top shin is moving in. So she has to learn to turn the knee bone inwards, so that this comes up and she gets the exercise here too. Now you can see, I touch her thoracic dorsal spine with my knee to give the stretch on that leg. And now she can lift up very well and stamp the heel down. That's the correct pose. So, so you should go on learning like that. Turn this also out so that this is also parallel like this. Good. Now the other way. Now if you observe, as you, the other three people, they had a very good stretch here. You, are, you people are not having that stretch on the, from the shoulder blades to the 10th or the 11th thoracic dorsal spine. So to get that, you have to press the inner center wrist on the floor and with that pressure of the inner wrist, you can move the chest. Move the chest better still. Now, if you let loose here, it does not move at all. So you have to lift this middle finger and then stretch the middle finger backwards. Ah, that. Now understood? Mm -hmm. The middle finger, frontal middle finger grips, but the back middle finger pushes backwards towards the wrist. Try again, all three. With that middle finger. Mm, that's the good opening of the chest. Mm, come inside, enough. Mm. Are you all happy now? Mm. Good. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you come, sir. Let me see. You know, yoga is a subject which it deals with the intellectual problems, emotional problems and instinctive problems. As such, postures which is a part of yoga, is yoga, it cannot be separated as if it is completely a different subject away from yoga. When we are practicing the postures in the beginning, we certainly think for health only, well-being. After a certain time, when the health has been achieved, the postures play a different role as mind of a practitioner goes towards the realization of the self. In the beginning, the organs of perception and mind are very close to each other. That's why we are tempted to the external environments. While we are practicing the asanas, without being, becoming lonely, asanas take away the mind from the organs of perception and moves closer towards the self. So that's why as we go on practicing, it becomes a spiritual asana. Till then, we have to work physically in order to keep each and every part of our body, the circulatory system, respiratory system, glandular system, digestive system, uh, excretory system, and we have to do various postures for the glands to bathe in blood so that they can secret the hormones to maintain a balanced mind, a balanced body and balanced self. Health covers body, mind and soul. Yoga is a union of body with the mind and mind with the soul so that all the three are one. Then there is, one cannot differentiate between physical health, mental health, spiritual health and that is pure divine health from the body to the soul.